Hey everyone, and welcome back. Today I thought I'd try something a little different. Um, I've been messing with this uh, fantastic Unity um, signal generator, and um, I pulled out the scope, the Rigol DS1054Z, and I was just messing with the signal generator, putting random components in series with the output and seeing what kind of uh, waveform it gave. And I found this really interesting, so I figured I'd make a small video about it. Now, as it is with a lot of these types of experimentation videos, um, the hookups can get a little confusing, so I'm just going to put the hookup diagram on the screen, and you're just gonna have to imagine that that little breadboard at the bottom of your screen has those exact connections on it. It was also brought to my attention during the uh, messing around stage that I have to be careful with the combination of devices I use in series with the function generator because I could inadvertently create a voltage spike and damage some of my equipment. I definitely don't want to do that, but since I've already messed with the components you're going to see today, I don't think that should be an issue. In the future, I do plan on combinations that might boost voltage, and in that case, I'll have something in place to protect my equipment, and if you want to do it, you should have it too. Well, first things first. Here's my signal. It is one kilohertz. Don't worry about the commas here. It's a bit confusing, but it's just to separate the values. This is one kilohertz, five volts peak to peak, no DC offset, no phase offset. And on the screen here, the blue trace will always be the trace we are triggering off of, and that is the unmodified wave. The yellow trace will be the modified one. So I'm just gonna pop channel one on. And so as you can see, we have our blue trace here. We have, oh, I don't have the measurements down here, but we do have 5.2 volts peak to peak. And of course I have that 10K ohm resistor in series, just in case I accidentally draw too much current from the function gen. I don't think it'll be a problem, but you never know. Also, my uh, probing is less than ideal here, so if you see a little bit of jumping around, that's why. The first component is in place. It is a 1N4001 diode, and let's turn on channel one and see what we get. So still at one kilohertz, we see that the positive voltage peaks are still there. See that? The yellow kind of follows up, but the negative voltage peaks are gone they are completely flattened, they disappeared. And that's because a single diode makes a single simple rectifier circuit. So this is what's happening. We're only keeping the positive peaks and not the negative peaks. They're completely eliminated from our diagram here, from our waveform. Now, something that's interesting is that if you look, this peak here, the yellow peak, is actually lower than the blue peak. What's going on there? Well, that's actually our diode voltage drop. So if I turn on the cursors here, I already have them all set up here and we see the difference is 480 millivolts. So there's a 480 millivolt drop when you go through a diode. And that's why diodes heat up in regular circuitry uh, because they do let the positive peaks pass but at the cost of a voltage drop. Also, if you notice, it's a little bit clipped here. Let's see if I can zoom in. Let me turn off the cursors. You see here, you see how there's a little bit of the blue, a little bit of the blue when it climbs up, we still got a flat point here in the yellow. Well, what's happening there is this blue voltage needs to go up higher than that voltage drop of the diode in order for the diode to let the, the, the voltage keep going through. So that's effectively our voltage drop here, the 0 0.46, 0 0.5 volt voltage drop. So that's really interesting. These are things you can only really see on a scope, but they are described in the data sheet. Now let's do something else here. So I'll switch this to one megahertz. Now look at the diode behavior. So 
we still got that voltage drop up here, but what's happening here? Well, the diode at this speed, one megahertz, so one million cycles per second, doesn't have enough time to clamp the negative voltage. So by the time that the negative voltage is coming through, the diode has started clamping. You see that little ramp there is a little bit different, but it has not clamped it yet. And then it transitions to its positive, um, to its uh, passing mode, and then it's again trying to catch up at every wave. So we can actually use a function generator to try to characterize how a diode acts, like its speed, for example. Let's go a little bit further down. We'll go 500 kilohertz. It's basically halving the speed. You see, the diode now has a little bit more time and does a little bit better job clamping, but it's still way too fast for it. Let's go down another order of magnitude, 50 kilohertz. Aha, there we go. This is the amount of time this diode needs to start clamping. And we can again get the cursors out and measure this if we wanted to. Manual cursor mode, we're gonna select, oops, we're gonna select our horizontal cursors, move the cursor A to the start here. Actually, it should really be where it starts going negative. So just about at this point here, our cursor B. Move that to just about where it flattens out, maybe about there. And then we should get the time here, 7.6 microseconds. So it takes 7.6 microseconds for this diode to go from um, passing mode to clamping mode. Pretty neat. Oh, we can slow this down a little bit more and see what the diode does. So we'll go 5 kilohertz. And as you can see here, if we turn the cursors off. So our diode does require some time in order to clamp that negative voltage, but it's pretty negligible here at 5 kilohertz. So this general purpose diode would be great but not for high speed signaling. You would need a specific high speed diode. I got now a different diode. I think this one is a Schottky diode, but I guess we'll, we'll soon find out because Schottky diodes typically have a lower voltage drop than a regular silicon diode. So one kilohertz, five volts peak to peak. Oh, here we go. Look at that. And it has a tiny an extremely small voltage drop probably along the order of a couple, maybe 0 0.3, 0 0.2 millivolts. Tiny voltage drop, pretty awesome. I think shot keys are also good at high frequency. So let's go up to a megahertz and see what happens. I did change this into uh, slope triggering. Let's see if I can change that. I was hoping to reduce the amount of jitter, but it didn't really work. So if you can see here, it's actually doing a fairly good job at following, but also it's not clamping. So we do have that smaller voltage drop here, but it isn't clamping. Let's go down an order of magnitude. Okay, 500k. Uh, not doing a good job at all at clamping. Let's drop down again. 50 kilohertz now. I think it's doing a better job than the regular silicone diode right there. It's doing a good job. 5 kilohertz now. There we go. 5 kilohertz perfectly clamped and there isn't that little overshoot there. So it's actually working perfectly and we're getting less of a voltage drop. This is why Schottky diodes are typically used in rectifier circuits because you do not lose as much of the total output power from the voltage drop. Pretty neat. I've got one more device to put in here though. Let's see if you can guess what it is. 
Okay, third component in the series with the function generator. Let's see if you can guess what it is. One kilohertz, obviously. Give up yet? Well, let's take a look at the characteristics here. So obviously we've got a fairly large voltage drop. It's not a shot key diode. So there's a large voltage drop there. But there's an interesting little feature here. If you can see this little uh, valley lines up with this valley here. But there's a little bit of clamping. What's going on here? Well, this component is a Zener diode. So what's happening is a Zener diode has the same thing as a regular diode. It allows voltage to cross in its um, direct polarization. So when the uh, cathode is facing towards a negative, it lets voltage cross minus a voltage drop. In its blocked mode, so cathode towards a positive, it also blocks just like a regular diode. However, once it reaches a certain voltage threshold in its blocked mode, it then allows current to go through minus a voltage drop. So the, the current will be allowed to go through, but it will drop voltage along the way. So this happens to be a 3.6 volt Zener diode. And so the current is blocked up until the voltage builds up to negative 3.6 volts. Then it allows the rest through. And when it hits 3.6 volts going the other way, it'll block up until it goes past its uh, voltage drop again to let it go in the positive direction. So that's the shape that you'll see for a Zener diode. So this would be interesting. Um, let's say you wanted to uh, turn something on only at this negative peak. Well, you can block um, a MOSFET's gate, for example, um, with the Zener diode up until it hits your threshold voltage and then it'll turn on the MOSFET. Super cool. Actually, I want to experiment with Zener diodes controlling MOSFETs in a future video, so let me know in the comments if you think that would be interesting. But let's see what happens when we speed up. Let's go up to 1 megahertz. So 1 million cycles per second. And it suffers the exact same fate as the regular diodes. It's just not fast enough. In fact, Zener diodes um, in order to get fast ones, you have to special, you have to order special rapid ones, and I don't think they'll go as fast as a shot key. So let's go down, let's go all the way down to 50 kilohertz right off the bat. So there we go. It's trying its darnest to keep up, but it's having trouble. It's just way too fast still. Let's go down to 5 kilohertz. There we go. It's able to do 5 kilohertz without much issue. It is capturing pretty good. And so that's it. This is just this little experimentation I wanted to, to do and to show you guys on camera. Um, if there's any other types of components you want me to put through this, uh, specifically diodes, because I think next ones up will probably be something like capacitors for me. Um, and maybe then inductors, who knows. But if there's certain things you would love to see the waveform of, uh, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.